Deportiva y con Sui. Deportiva y con Sui. La factoría del deporte de este New York para ti. Es una máquina. Es una máquina. Pensada para ti. Pensada para ti. Número uno en las redes sale la que Con informaciones importantes siempre frescas. Y con entrevistas que te ponen de cabeza. Lo mejor del deporte lo encontrarás aquí. Búscale en las redes sale la que Suscríbete. Ahí sí. Infórmate. Ok. Freddie, so uh, when we were in Anaheim, yeah. it seemed like it was going to be a vacation for the Freeman family. Yeah. How surprised were you that you got this call? Uh, pretty surprised. I was. Um, I had a sombrero on yesterday. I was <laughs> with my kids skipping rocks on the water at the ocean, and um, I actually had to walk back to the house. I didn't bring my phone with me. And I had, to, I had to go pee, to be honest. And I walked in, and also I saw Andrew Friedman call me, and I was like, this is a weird time to call me. So I answered it, and he said I was an all-star. So uh, that happened about 5 p.m. yesterday. So I had zero stress all day, and then that call came, and I was like trying to put this in motion now. So it was a whirlwind of a day last night. It's been a unique year for you. Is this the most unique uh, all-star Yeah, call? I think this just is kind of <laughs> fits perfectly for 2022 so um you know but it's exciting i got charlie here he's in the clubhouse right now so he's really excited are you excited too to oh be yeah united with a lot of guys yeah it's good to see with. everybody charlie gave ronald a huge hug already so that's what he's more <laughs> excited uh, about but it's, it's good to see everybody this this event it's so much fun to see other guys and all the guys you compete with and you get to share a clubhouse together how special is it to have it here at Dodger Stadium? You've done a lot of promotion for this game. Yeah, yeah. I felt like we were just here a few months ago doing an All-Star Game promotion, and to be back out here and be in the All-Star Game is pretty special. And to have him here and a, a four other Dodgers, there's still a couple missing in my opinion, but, um, you know, it, it's good. It's good. Dodger Stadium, it's been a while since we've had it here, so it's going to be fun. You guys think made the right choice, made the right decision to start Kershaw. Yeah, yeah, he did. I actually got the call from him uh, a couple of days ago. He was trying to get a hold of Clayton, but Dave was in a meeting um, doing pictures, so he called me and he goes, "Can I talk to Clayton?" I said, "Of course." So yeah, I handed Clayton the phone. So uh, it was pretty cool. Um, you know, it's gonna be. There's... Yeah, it's it's gonna be awesome for Clayton to be able to pitch in front of his home stand. Um, well, I think there's, what, 80 guys in the All-Star game? Let's make it 100, because there's a couple missing. <laughs> when, you, uh, when you think back to your first half, the team's first half, yeah. you guys are the only National League team with 60 wins. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is going in the right direction where this could be another big stage for you guys. Yeah, I think, I think um, especially the last couple weeks, um, we've been playing really good baseball of, of late. And, I mean, we're missing so many pieces, too, and the way we've been playing. Um, I mean, we, hopefully we can get Blake back soon. you got Tommy still. Uh, you got Dustin May on the – Justin's hitting. Max with the three-run home run a couple days ago. Things are just kind of – falling into place the last few uh, few weeks and you know it's kind of been showing on the field and what Tony's done Tyler's done it's it's been it's been incredible the the group effort to to rally around a lot of missing pieces to to put up a lot of wins when do you think it started to come together for you guys was it in Cincinnati um yeah I would say that's when the offense started to pick up um we started to hit a lot better then as a group and you know it's just a lot of us started to hit better that's all you know there's Everyone's talking about situational hitting. I was just like, none of us were really hitting. So uh, once we all started to click and things started to roll, and you know, you can see what we're, what we're capable of. Since you're here, do you have a prediction for the home run derby tonight? Um, I think Charlie is. It's hard to bet against Pete Alonso, you know, obviously because he's won this thing two times and he knows how to hit a lot of home runs, but. I think Charlie wants Ronald to win. <laughs> <laughs> Does Ronald have the type of swing to win this? Oh, yeah. I, did, what, Ronald, remember Ronald in Cleveland? Yeah. He was going oppo in the home run derby. So I, he can do whatever he wants with the baseball. So I think he's going to put on a really good show. Anybody hit it on the pavilion roof tonight? I depends on the baseballs. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a chance, though. Ronald, Pete, there's a lot of guys that can do it. Hey, Freddie, Thank you. what did you think of some of the rule changes? Um, I like the DH. Um, I, I liked it. Um, the DH 
you know, it's hard. I was in, you know, being in National League, it's, it's kind of it's kind of different. It takes the, you know, the double switches and the manager doing a lot of stuff. But, you know, a lot of guys, I mean, the last thing you want to see is I've played against Jacob deGrom, I think, twice where he swung and had to come out of a game. I don't think anybody in baseball wants to see Jacob deGrom come out of a game for hitting. So um, I think it's better. Um, obviously, more runs are, are created as well. So I, I kind of like the DH now. I guess this committee is still trying to determine what rule changes are going to happen for next year. Yeah, well, I'm not in that committee. I haven't really paid attention to it. I've had a lot going on this year, so I'm um, kind of just trying to push things off to the side. I haven't really paid Would attention you get to it. Rid of the shift? Um, that is not up to me. Uh, I don't mind it. Uh, it's part of the baseball, but if they do mind, uh, I think a lot of guys will benefit from it. Pretty, how hard has it been to focus? You've done so well in the field. There's been a lot of off the field distractions around here. How hard has it been to focus? How, uh, how have you compartmentalized that? Because uh, it's not really that hard to me. It's just outside noise. You know, it's I don't really have social media anymore, so I don't really see what's going on. So that's the good thing. So um, I know there's a lot of things going on, but um, you know, I feel good. I feel great where I'm in. The t organization's been wonderful since day one. The guys. Um, so it's been easy to go out on the field with the guys I got. Has it, has it been as fun as it should be? Have you had fun? Oh, I'm having a blast. I mean, we're, we've got 60 wins in the first half. We've got a great group of guys, and, and obviously been playing well. How do you feel about being Brian Snifter again as manager? Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. Um, I actually talked to him a couple days ago, um, you know, and FaceTimed him, and he was excited. I was excited. You know, it's kind of life works funny ways sometimes, so it's, it's going to be good back, to be back with him. How cool is it to hear the Freddie chant? Uh, it's been pretty amazing since day one at Camelback Ranch. So um, I, I can't say enough about this organization, this fan base, um, how they embraced me since day one. So um, it's been it's been a heck of a ride the first four months already. Really happy here. I am really happy here. Freddie, last year I asked a question about basketball. We're going to do the same. Okay. Can you explain to our audience why the Home Run Derby is more exciting than the <laughs> NBA Slam Dunk Contest? Well, you're asking a baseball player why, I know, a, ba so why a baseball player. I know player. I'm going to get a biased answer. Uh, yeah, you're getting a biased answer. I, well, I think hitting a baseball is the hardest thing to do in sports. Um, and to see him go 500 feet is pretty special. So. Um, I also like the dunk contest too. That, that's hard to. It's pretty pretty <laughs> cool. But I'm a baseball player, so I'm going to choose baseball. There it is. Yeah. And what about? I know you already have it, so I won't. Uh, you can't really answer this truthfully. If you could be an All Star ten times and never win a World Series ring, or win a World Series ring uh, and never a be World, an All Star, win a World Series ring every time. Yeah, every time. <laughs> every <laughs> time. Do you think of they're going to decide if it's tied after nine by a home run derby? Are they doing that? Yeah. That'll be fun. We got Pete Alonzo and Ronald, so I, I like our chances. Would you want to bat it? Uh, no, I'm not very good at hitting home runs and batting practice. <laughs> what have you learned about the Patriots you didn't know about them? Um, I don't think I really learned anything new because the person that Clayton is is what you see every single day, and um, it's just it's you see Hall of Famers and see how they go about their business, and you have a kind of a mindset of how they are, and then they exceed that. Um, his preparation for every single start, it's its un, its uncanny. Um, his love for his family, um, that's what's so special to me. You mentioned it's, Charlie playing against Charlie. Yeah, you have to well, out of yeah, well Char they're on the same team, so that was, that's was that been fun. I think we can start that again in about two months, so it'll oh, be good. What, what did you see in that? How did you enjoy that? A joy. joy. Yeah, kids playing baseball, there's nothing better than that. You would play and teach them at all? Or uh, I try and uh, we just watch. Um, but unfortunately, we don't get to be there every game and every practice, so we let those other coaches do their job. What league is it? Uh, it's just in Toluca Lake. Okay. Yeah. How are you feeling right now? Just Peyton Brown and Snake in the call. Did you guys see it? Well, Andrew Friedman called me yesterday to let me know, but uh, I talked to Snit on Sunday because he was trying to get a hold of Clayton. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, Clayton was in the training room, so I just handed the phone and walked out because that's not my conversation to be a part of. So um, I just let him go, and Clayton, I think Clayton walked out just to talk to him. So I don't really know how that conversation went. That's a Clayton conversation. Clayton's talking about how his son getting older and makes kind of these moments more yeah. special for you. Is it kind of the same way? Yeah, my son's sitting in the clubhouse playing Roblox right now waiting for me to get back. And the joy and the excitement. He woke up at 7.30 this morning and could not go back to bed. So... Uh, he was pretty excited. I don't think I think that's what makes it more fun for us as we get older. Um, our kids having so much fun with it, and he's just happy that I'm going to be on the NL All Star team for MLB The Show next year. <laughs> yeah, well, Charlie's been asking where Charlie is because Charlie, my Charlie's here. I guess Charlie Kershaw is on his way. Um, he keeps asking where he is, but that's the fun part. That's 
if you see those and how much fun they have every single day together, um, that's what makes everything so fun for us as dads. So I'm glad I was able to play good enough so he can be able to enjoy this again. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, like, you respect him and play against him for so long, and then you become teammates, and then I'm trying to get my feet settled, and then he's helping me get my feet settled, and then where our kids are on the same team, so we're outside of the field hanging out. So I think that was huge in the process of getting, you know, getting comfortable here, and, and I think we got another, I think it's six weeks it starts again in that league, so it's going to be fun. How are you feeling just being added? Yeah, I feel good. You know, um, I, I was skipping rocks on the water yesterday with my kids, though, so uh, I was having a good time, and then I got the call, and it made it even better. Charlie was so excited, so that's what makes it so fun for me is my kids being so excited. But how special is it to have so many of your Dodger teammates on the National League? It's pretty special. We got five, with, including, and then one, so that makes six now, and I still think there's two more that should be here, um, in my opinion. So. I heard there's like 80 all-stars and like 10% of the league. I think we need 11% of the league. We need a couple more, um, but it, it's special. A lot of all these guys are so deserving to be here. So uh, to share it and Clayton getting the start, um, I I got to see Derek Jeter and Mar Mariano Rivera's last all-star games. Not to say this is Clayton's all-star, but this is like a moment for him to start in front of his home home crowd. It's going to be special tomorrow. So you've seen a lot of history as far as this yes. This game is awesome. Yeah, and this game tomorrow is even more history when one of our, the greatest pitchers in baseball history is going to start an all-star game in front of his home crowd. Uh, I don't think he can get much better than that. See, yeah. Casting yeah. forward the other side and game plan posting games, like, what's different about him in this game? Well, it feels like I've, I've watched a couple of his games on film, and his splitter is dropping a lot more. So I don't know what if he made an adjustment. He's throwing his heater for more strikes. He's mixing in the sliders to the righties a lot more, and he's throwing the splitter and two-strike count. So it's hard to game plan that, because for us, it's fastball splitter, and then he's mixing in a lot more sliders too. So he's done a different game plan, so I'm glad I'm not having to face that this year, because it's just a whole different toning. Is he a different person out there? You can just like mound presence, how he's going about things. Yeah, like, I mean, wow. uh, he, every single, he has an approach and a game plan every single time, and he has intent on every pitch. So when you, when you have that mindset going like he does, it's, it's hard to beat. When you're so casting forward to next spring, would you consider representing Canada at the World Oh, 100%. Basketball? I've already talked. Um, so if they ask me, I'm 100% in. Yeah, I figured yeah. you're probably going to get oh, asked. Yeah. Uh, I'm, that's, I talked to Tyler O'Neill in St. Louis. Stubby Claps, their first base coach. So, yeah, I'm, I want to play for Team Canada. I already asked Andrew Friedman if the Dodgers are okay with um, – guys playing for WPC and he said yes so if they asked I'm in what did you enjoy about the experience last time well for me it's more I get to represent the country that my dad and, and mom uh, grew up and were raised in and obviously my, my mom not being in here I just like to honor her um, so that's the the big reason for that, that I, I like to do that I've been in a different note this offseason there are a lot of connections with you with the Blue Jays yeah uh, and this, on your spectrum of choices how did they fit into the mix? Well, I did, I did a couple meetings with them. Um, they were very interested, but, you know, once the lockout hit and things kind of after the lockout lifted, we kind of went a whole different way. Freddie, forgive me if this is repetitive, but i got to ask you, when you got the word yesterday, yeah. you got the call to come, you're going to be a part of this. Yeah. Tell us about the moment and what your reaction was. Well, I had a sombrero on, and um, I got the call from Andrew Friedman, and he said um, they, they want me to be an all-star. It was about 4.30 p.m., so... Um, I was already in all-star break mode because we had a day off yesterday. I was hanging out with the kids, changing, changing dirty diapers and doing all that yesterday. So um, we went from stress-free to a lot of stress because then we had a plan. You know, I don't have, it's only me and Charlie here in Los Angeles. The rest are in Orange County still. So um, they're trying to make their way up tonight. I don't know if they're going to be able to. So tomorrow's a big day, but um, last minute, still, still, still special. You're, you're, sorry. Charlie, <laughs> I'm pretty excited too, though. But he didn't—he could not sleep last night. It was—it's it, for me. It's just cute to see how excited he is. And he was more. He, two days ago, he was playing MLB the Show, and he plays with the National League All Star team. And obviously, I'm on it because it's last year's. He goes, "Daddy, you're not going to be on this team next year." I said, "I know. I'm sorry." You know, like. And then I got called. He goes, "Daddy, you're going to be on the All Star team." And that was his first thing. I said, "That's what you. That's your mindset." Uh, so that's what makes it so fun for us.
obviously you've been a part of this many years yeah. in the past, but to be here now in LA and a yeah. new team and to be on this team again, how different and how special is it? Uh, it's going to be special. This is my obviously home stadium that I get to play in, and you know they've been the fans, Dodger fans have been so wonderful to me since day one. So to be able to play in front of them, you know, whenever I get into the game is going to be special. But I'm more excited for Clayton. Um, that is going to be special. Um, to hear his name called and hear how loud. 2013, Juan Uribe's home run against the Braves was the loudest I've ever heard Dodger Stadium. I think we might beat that tomorrow when Clayton goes on that mound. And um, So I, I can't wait to be able to – because I, I think all of us are more fans of, of the other guys here. So I was always a fan of Clayton, not when I had to face him. But now that we're teammates, I can't wait to see that moment tomorrow. How does it feel to be so – Fans, players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a what makes him special? Plate discipline. It's 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 unbelievable from the moment, moment he got to the big leagues, how he can control his strike zone. Um, that is so hard to do at such a young age, and for him to just come into the league and be able to do that, that's what sets him apart. Um, and obviously he's gotten hot the last couple of weeks, and I think it's going to just keep going in the second half. He's one of the best hitters in this game, um, and it's – the Soto shuffle, he just brings a lot of a lot of joy to the game. You mentioned he's one of the best. I mean, you're standing at first base for probably dozens and dozens. What's, when he comes up, yeah. especially in a big spot, yeah. what do you think? Uh, he's probably going to get a hit. <laughs> yeah, or pitch around him. <laughs> He's that special. It doesn't matter left-handed or right-handed. Um, he puts a he grinds abs. When you when you don't give at bats away, that's what make that makes people so special. And he's one of those. And he's already done it. He's already been in the league but four years, and he's like 23 years old. He's he's putting up numbers that you 60 years from now we're gonna look back and say, wow, we got to watch him play. It's kind of like watching Mike Trout play and those kind of guys right now. That's gonna be Juan Soto. Freddie, when you're so locked in. Think about it. I mean, what goes through your mind? Yeah, no, I got I got asked it like all the Braves coaches were asking me when I today like you got really hot. Uh, it's it's one of those stretches you don't think you're ever going to get into, um, but when you get into it, you don't really want to talk about because you don't want to come out of it. But um, you know, it's just one of those where I was I wasn't swinging at balls, and every time I swung at a strike, I hit it. You know, and most when you're not in it, you foul those pitches off, you miss those pitches. It's just one of those stretches where I was actually hitting them. Does a ball look? They say if you get a ball looks bigger. Is, is, is that, is that just I don't myth? think that's true. I think that's a myth. Um, it's just you just feel it's this game is so mental. So when you have that stretch, you're feeling good at the plate. Your mind takes over. You're just you you, you want to get to the plate. Things are taking over, and you seem to not miss your pitch. That's all it is. It's just you're not missing your pitch instead of fouling them off. Pretty, it's such an honor to play in this game. What's it like for you? How has it changed? The changing is my sons. Um, obviously, my two other ones that don't will never remember this. So I, hopefully, I make another one when they're old enough. But for Charlie and his excitement, that's what it's all about for me now. Um, I was pretty. He was pretty sad that I hadn't made it yet. So when I told him yesterday that I made the All Star team, he was um, overjoyed. And so we saw you out with uh, Blake Kershaw and his son Charlie yes. a couple weeks ago. How did the Charlies get along? Oh, they get along great. He's already asking because my Charlie's in the clubhouse because yeah. um, all my family's not here in Los Angeles. So I had to bring him. And I guess Charlie, because we pulled in together, me and Clayton, and Charlie, he said Charlie's on his way, and Charlie's all excited. He keeps asking where Charlie Kershaw is for the last hour, so hopefully Charlie gets here soon. Your son is eight? <laughs> He's six. six. About to be six in September, so he wants to be six, so I'll tell him six. Yeah. If you could only choose a Disney song as your walk-up song, what would it be and why? Um, man, that's a hard one. We just watched Encanto, so... Bruno, you gotta go with. I like Bruno. It's just that's catchy. I like catchy songs, so I'll go with Bruno from Encanto. Okay, last one. If you had to be stuck in an elevator for a whole day with someone on your team, who would you not want it to be and why? Who would I not want it to be? Um, mm, there's um, I can't. There's a reason I want to say someone, but wait, wait, there's the. He, uh, he's a little gassy, so I don't want to be in that, but I won't say his name. Is he starting tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> no comment. Um, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Cody, because I think he just wouldn't talk very much. I think he'd just kind of hang out and just wait for it to be over. He'd just kind of hang out in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything that surprised you that you didn't expect what about being a teammate, him as a person? Um, yeah, I, like, obviously I have a big family unit uh, that travels with me everywhere I go, and he has the same thing. So we kind of have the, 
the similar path of how we approach each and every day when that's family first and um, you know we just kind of connected from the beginning um, he's quiet just kind of like I am uh, in the clubhouse and we just like to do our job and go home to our family so I think that's why we connected so well yeah I th I, maybe I think it might help that now we're just together and we just no no one has to put it all on their shoulders. That's what's so great about this team. There's so many unbelievable talents and guys that are face to the franchises. You can pick multiple guys on the Dodgers. I mean, obviously it's Clayton, but you got the guy to the right who's one of the best shortstops in the game. Then you got Mookie. It, it's amazing what this what this team. Uh, the front office put together and there's just so many guys that no one has to put it all on their shoulders you can just spread it out over the across the team were there any gestures from him like just like that's like welcome to this um no not really um we just kind of started connecting in spring training you know each and every day and you know obviously it got more and more and we started flying together to places because he likes to fly on off days with his family so he invited me a couple of times so i flew with him and Got to hang out with Kenley, his daughter, and now, now, now I'm, I'm her cousin, so we get to hang out a lot now. Yeah. As a guy who's been through it twice, what advice would you have for a guy like Juan Soto trying to navigate the tough decision of whether to test free agency or sign an extension? Or well, I mean, that's not really my question. That's up to him. It's his personal choice. Um, you know, he's got a lot going on with that. He's still got a couple, I think, a couple more years to, to navigate it, so he's got time. Talk to players more at first base during the All-Star game. <laughs> I think we know, not really, because there's so many good pitchers, so not a lot of guys usually get the first base. So <laughs> we do a lot of the talking in the clubhouses, and like after this, we'll go do a team photo, and then we got to go do like pictures and all that stuff. So you run into the American League team. So that's the one thing I wish we could do more American League and National League together, because you don't get to see those guys as much. So we would like, to, I would like to intertwine more with them, but. Uh, it's just cool to be able to hang out with guys you compete with all year. You were told so late, you could have easily turned this down. This is a big deal to you. Isn't it? Yeah, all star games. Even after are, all you've been through. All yeah, you've been all star games are special, especially in your home stadium. Um, and then when you have a son that wants you to be there as much as my son does, so that's what makes it more special for me. A couple quick ones for you, Freddie. Uh, favorite baseball movie? Um, I like true stories, so I'm going to go with the rookie. Garrett Anderson. And celebrity you most want to meet? Celebrity you most want to meet. I usually don't get starstruck or anything like that, but um, man, that's a tough question. I would have to go probably Mark Wahlberg. I like his movies. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you think LA knows you yet? Uh, I mean, I played against him for a few years, so. I mean, the fans. Do you think the fans? I Fans think I think they're love you. yeah they I think they're you. getting to getting to know me. Obviously, it's going to take more than three months because um, uh, I signed what mid March, so I guess we're on four months now. I think they, I think they knew that I needed the love and they embraced me from day one, and you know they they helped me get my feet settled and we've hit the ground running the last couple of weeks. And once I got the closure in Atlanta and all that, and things have just kind of taken off for us lately. Any regrets about any of that stuff? I don't have any regrets. Uh, last year during the kind of this uh, all star uh, kind of press conference, you talk about uh, Shohei kind of yeah. opening the door for two way things. Yeah. And I told him, Shohei, about that. Uh, yeah. He said, I kind of really appreciate that. So the other day, you got Shohei. Yeah. Are you, you guys have a chance to talk? Uh, we talked a little bit. Um, I told him not to hit the ball so high next time so I don't make an error on the pop up. Um, but no, we we didn't get to talk that much. Um, I did, once he, he just let, let off, and I, I felt like he was trying to steal that base. So uh, we talked a little bit, but not not much. But it, generational talent. I don't think we'll ever see another show here, Tony. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, like a lot of people kind of criticize him when Joe came to the league. Yeah. I think the door has opened. Yeah, the door is open for more two-way players, but um, I think it's hard because of minor leagues and all that stuff. He didn't have any minor leagues. I think that's what was so he was, it was easier for him to be able to come over and do it and give that shot. But when you play three, four years in the minor leagues, it's and it's a lot. So I don't know how it's going to work for um, guys that get drafted. So. 
Um, I think there's going to be another try at it. Some someone's going to try, but I don't know if there's going to be a, another Shohei because that's just I don't think we're going to be talking about Shohei long after we're gone from this earth. <laughs> okay, so we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> Oh, it's good. I um, I got here early, so when I walked in, Snit was signing balls, and every like uh, all the coaches were there. Obviously, I had Charlie with me, so he gave everybody hugs. So it's good to see everybody. I was lucky enough to see him three weeks ago too in Atlanta. So kind of full, worked full circle. So it's good to see everybody again. How are you seven for seven in stolen bases? What do you mean? You don't think I'm fast? <laughs> I don't know. I usually pick the ones that are big leg kicks and curveballs. <laughs> I mean, it's really it's really stunning. I mean, you, you, I, I, I usually know when I can make it. I, I know I need over a 1-5 to home plate and stuff like that. So I usually, if I pick a wrong pitch like a heater, like I'm usually out, but I have to pick the right moments. Are you aware how big, that, that's really big every time you do it, it's huge. Yeah, I usually do it in the spots where I need to. Um, obviously I know that I'm not the fastest, so I can't really, like I don't want to get thrown out because it would be a bad look. <laughs> Why are you stealing? But, um, you know, I try and pick the spots where it's most beneficial to the team. And you went going on third to home on that flat ball against the Cardinals. Yeah. You're not worried about home plate collisions or? No, no, I'm, I'm a baseball player. If something happens, uh, it happens injury-wise, but I got I to gotta do what's right for the you're, team. You're very, you're very aggressive on the bases. Yes. I try and run the pillows as good as I can. I know I'm not fastest, so I try and do it as smart as I possibly could. And, and aggressive. That's really changed the tone, that's changed the tone of the team. Uh, that's what they say. Um, I try to rub off as much as I can, but um, you know, I just try and first a third are huge. 90 feet in this game, you never know when that 90 feet is going to matter the most. You're just trying to get as many points as you can. So running the bases is a lot. Uh, well, I was already, we were at my house in Orange County. Um, I, was, I had a sombrero on. I was skipping rocks uh, with my kids and hanging out, changing dirty diapers. Because uh, we had a day off yesterday, so I was already in all-star break mode. I got the call at like 4.30 uh, from Andrew Friedman and it went from stress-free to a lot of stress after that because trying to plan of how, because we, we um, like my family's not in Los Angeles right now so I don't think they're going to even make it tonight. We have a lot of things that were not planned so uh, it's been a lot of stress lately um, but I got the call and my five-year-old son is very, very excited and he's actually in the clubhouse right now. So. No, we were just going to stay at my house in Orange County. Yeah. Well, yeah, Orange County is, yeah, where my house is, is kind of uh, vacation. <laughs> Thank you. Freddie, a lot of things have happened this year. This is sort of a homecoming, obviously, coming to LA. And yeah. So, how is this All Star game more special or special? I think it's more special because my dad's going to be able to drive 30, 35 minutes to come watch me play in an All Star game. Um, my grandfather's going to come too, so um, that's what makes it so special. Um, you know, obviously growing up 45 minutes from this stadium and then it's more special for me when I'm just playing a normal game and all of a sudden I see my grandfather start walking down the, the stairs to sit in his seat to watch uh, watch me play that's what makes it so special to be home when you when you know it's official they played starting yeah like, baseball getting it right place played starting at the half, how meaningful is that it's very meaningful I think if someone was 15 and 0 with a zero ERA coming into this and they chose Clayton to start I think everyone would be understandable of that um, these are moments um, that are made for history that we're going to be talking about long after that Clayton Kershaw got to start a home all-star game in Dodger Stadium um, it's going to be special like I said earlier I got to watch Derek Jeter's last all-star game and Mariano Rivera's last all-star game not that this is Clayton's last all-star game I'm just saying that he gets to start in front of his home crowd um, like I said earlier 2013 was the loudest I've ever heard Dodger Stadium when Juan Uribe hit that two-run home run against us I think tomorrow might beat that yeah. Uh, generational talent. Um, someone to be able to control the strike zone that early in their career um, is unheard of. Uh, you don't see it. And um, the way he carries himself, the joy he has for this game, um, it, it's special. And I think he's only 23 years old, so we're going to be watching him for a long time. You see or hear that he might be available? I mean, how much would that change? Well, when you have guys like that potentially being available, I think there's a lot of teams that want Juan Soto on their team. But um, there's a couple more years till that happens, so we'll see what happens. Yep. Freddie, quick and easy one. Your last meal on planet Earth. Can 
fit on one plate and you get okay. one drink of choice. One drink of choice, last meal. Um, gosh. Man, I want to, I'd have to go probably just a nice filet, probably a baked potato with butter with some bacon on it and some cheese. I love broccoli, so I'm going to go with broccoli. And then um, I like New York style cheesecake, just plain. So we're going New York style cheesecake. And then I'll probably go with a Dr. Pepper because that was my mom's favorite drink. If I'm going out and to go see her, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Freddie, you're not when you got the call because it's not so much the game; it's those your son being yeah. in the clubhouse, your grandfather. A lot of excitement. I had no stress yesterday until I got that call, just trying to get everything in place. But when I told my son that I was gonna be an all-star, um, that's what makes it so special for me. I, I wish I could just recreate that face. Um, because it was a face that I'll never forget. He's, like I told everyone earlier, two days ago he was playing MLB The Show, he plays with the National League All-Star team. Obviously I'm on that from last year's game, and he was sad I wasn't gonna be on next year's <laughs> All-Star team. But so that was his first comment he said. He goes, Daddy, I'm, you're gonna be able to be on the National League All-Star team next year. So this is the little things in life that uh, remind you how fun this game is. What's up, buddy? How are you? Yeah. Hey, um, so this is now your multiple All-Star, yep. which is awesome, but in your childhood, growing up, what is your first ever All-Star game memory that you have? Um, I'd have to say watching Garrett Anderson uh, hit the home run and do the home run derby, I think in Chicago, the White Sox, I think he won the home run derby, so I think that was my first memory, because I love Garrett Anderson. Yeah. And um, so I think that was my first memory of All-Star Games. We're back here in Hollywood for the first time for the All-Star Games yeah. forever. 42 years, in, I think, right? 42 years. If you could run into any celebrity <laughs> on the street, the biggest star that you would want to run into, who would it be? Uh, I got asked who I'd want to meet earlier, and I said Mark Wahlberg, because I like his movies. Yeah. Um, Here's Jack the too. Yeah, I, I don't know. that. I'm sure there's going to be a lot in the next couple of days. So <laughs> can I answer that question to see if I, who I, if I run into anybody? Yeah, we'll but I'm, I said Mark Wahlberg because I love his movie, so I'm going to pick Mark Wahlberg. Right, thanks, yeah. Good luck. Ready. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, from Japanese TV station. I know you haven't faced Shohei Otani. Oh, yeah. But, uh, Thankfully, I don't want to go over four. <laughs> so you might be facing him tomorrow. And uh, yeah. one thing question of Shohei Otani if you have, if you pick one pitch of his, yeah. uh, he throws like asshole, slider, splitter. Which one would be your like most difficult? I mean, his splitter. I I've watched that on TV a lot, and it doesn't look like anybody can hit it. So I don't want to face uh, that splitter. Um, is he going to pitch tomorrow? He might be. I don't think he might, but um, I would probably say I don't want to face the splitter. So I guess I should probably hit the heater before he gets to the splitter. What's your overall impression of Shohei? Uh, so he's a player that's probably not going to come around again. Um, he's, a, he's a talent that you're going to be talking about, like we talk about Babe Ruth. And we're going to be talking about him like Shohei Otani. Long after we're gone, uh, people behind us are going to be talking about Shohei Otani. Thank you so much. Yeah. In spring training, we got so much uh, hype about the All-Stars on this team, yeah. the MVPs. Where would you be without those other guys? Uh, wow, that's a. I like that question because I have obviously, you know, I've had a lot going on, and those guys surrounded me and helped guide me through this process of getting settled, getting my feet sunk into the ground here. Um, having those guys care about you and to help you and want you to be successful, um, it's just amazing what this organization is, and I'm just so happy to be a part of it because. There's multiple face of the franchises on this team. Um, there's MVPs all over the place. There's batting titles. Um, it, it's it's a special group of people, and I am just so happy to be here because, man, the, the, these guys helped me so much, Bill. It's 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 it's, it's emotional because I've gone through a lot, um, and these guys in this clubhouse, man, they surrounded me. The fan base has surrounded me, and it's been just a special start to. Uh, I think a wonderful Dodger career. Yeah, I'm sure playing against him, you knew they had a deep roster. Yeah. Deep the depth, I, the, the depth has surprised me because if you think about all the injuries we had, I mean, 
if you think, like, just in our bullpen, like, Evan Phillips, what he's done this year, Yancy Almonte, I mean, we lost Blake, we lost, we lost Tommy Canely, we've lost so many guys, and then now you think about Blake's almost starting to come back. Now you got Dustin May on his way back. We lost Walker Bueller. We lost Clayton for a little bit. The Tyler Anderson's Tony. It's and then I mean it's just amazing. Luckily our our we lost Edwin, so a big bench piece was gone. You know, like we've had so many doors open and guys are shuffling through, and it's been amazing what this depth has because it's been tested, and um, that's just a testament to Andrew and. You know, Brandon Gomes and all those guys in the front office doing a wonderful job. You're probably expecting to have you know, a big lead in the division, 60 wins, is not surprising. Yeah. The way you about it, surprising. Uh, I, th I think it wasn't, We there was a lot of speed bumps. I think we would all want a smoother road to 60 and 30, and I don't even know what, I think, what's our nine games or something like that? Ten games. Um, I mean, it's a great start. Yeah. <laughs> 60 wins in the first half is a lot of wins, so um, I think we'd all want guys that didn't get hurt I think that's the thing no one wants to see your teammates and friends get hurt so but to be where we are and to know they could potentially be coming at the end of the season that's huge for us and to, to go through those little tests as a unit and to get through those tests on the outside and that's what makes a team a special team even more special <laughs> as a punter oh, as a hitter um, well, we just faced him two days ago, and he went left on left, curveball for a base hit, and then a fastball for a base hit. So that's pretty special. Uh, he hit me the highest pop-up I've ever seen in my entire life, and I dropped it. And um, um, what he can do, it's, it's just so amazing what he can do from pitching to go and hit in the same game. Um, I don't know how he does it. Um, it's just special to watch. We're all fans of everyone here, and we're all fans of Shohei. I don't think you can. I don't really think you can. We can talk about Shohei all we want, but I don't really know if there's any words you can really put out there. To Like how we talk about Babe Ruth is how people are going to talk about Shohei Otani 100 years from now. So, I mean, we can write how amazing he is, but I don't really think that's even enough for what he's doing and what he deals with every single day outside of just being a baseball player. He has so much going on. Um, and... What he does on the field is just unbelievable. So hats off to him because I don't, I couldn't do what he's doing. Um, so I'm just I'm happy we get to watch him and be alive for Shohei Otani. Do you think he should get two paychecks next time? He <laughs> <laughs> he's doing a lot. So um, I don't know. We'll see what happens in that. That's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I got to play against Albert for a long time. Um, he's a talent. Hi, Gabe. <laughs> um, he's a talent that, I mean, he's one of the best right-handed hitters of all time. And I'm in the locker room, and he's three feet away in that locker for me. And that's just, it's amazing. It really is. Uh, what he's done over a course of 20-plus years. Um, it's going to be fun to watch him go in the Hall of Fame in five years. It's a first ballot, no, no doubt. If he's not 100%, I don't know what a Hall of Famer is. So... Um, it's going to be fun to be able to share a clubhouse and a dugout with him for a couple of days. Yeah. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> yo say, yo, hold on. Yo, yo soy Freddie Freeman. Y este es el juego de estrellas. Nailed it. Hi, John. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think I did. Uh, I did play fantasy baseball uh, when I was a kid, but I don't think I remember voting for All-Stars. So it's a weird. Now that I'm a Major League Baseball player, I, st I vote as much as I can for all the guys. So it's, it's kind of a weird turn. What are some of the, when you're voting, what are some of the stats or numbers? Well, to be honest with you, I voted for all Dodgers, okay? okay? <laughs> We're all biased, I promise you. Every single guy, I promise okay, you voted. voted for himself, yeah, so. I, I promise you we all voted for our teammates. So, um, and then when, after you get through the first election, then you start looking at numbers and stuff like that. I'm, to be honest with you, every first election was a Dodger. That's what I did. So <laughs> then I looked up the numbers, and then we got kind of go off of who's having the best year. Do you think... Legacy, like, you're here now, but a week ago you 
before. Yeah. You've had this great career, and I know first base was pretty yeah. proud of this year. But should what you've done in your career... I haven't been doing this long enough. <laughs> That's why Albert, 20-plus uh, years, 700 home runs. Um, I've only been doing this for 12 years. we got a lot longer to go. <laughs> Reggie, Rod, I'm before you. I voted for Mickey Mantle for the for okay, you're a little star game. So I'm John. A, I'm a bit older than you. Yeah, I know I only have 32. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you seem very happy, relaxed. Yeah. I'm doing great, yeah. Um, ever since uh, we left, I got the closure in Atlanta. That was big. I, I said on Friday, I don't know if I was looking for closure, but when I got to Colorado on Monday after that series, I had the closure. Um, you know, I was talking to a lot of guys. They were like, you're never going to get the closure until you, you didn't even have your ring yet. Everything you worked for your whole life, you didn't even have the ring yet. So once I got there, it was like a two-ton boulder off the shoulders, and I was able to, and then, I sent the guys a message and had a, a talk to them all and just wanted, I said thank you to everybody for, you know, sticking with me and helping me get through the closure part. So, um, yeah, I'm relaxed. Uh, I feel good. Um, the guys in this clubhouse, the people in this organization, the fan base here has supported me literally since day one. They were doing Freddie Chance at Camelback Ranch when I got there. So I think the fans knew that I needed the love to, to get me through because, I mean, if anybody's been on a job for a long time and goes to a new job, it's 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 difficult and uh what the dodgers organization and dodgers fan base has done for me and my family um that's why it's been able to just compartmentalize because it's been it, once i get to the field it's been great so um and then the guys in the clubhouse man special group i'm just happy to be a part of it and freddie obviously there's a wealth of talent in southern california both wrestling arenado darno freed so many guys yeah from this region this uh, it's pretty special. I think a lot of guys are going to have a lot of family members uh, coming to this, coming to the stadium the next couple of days. So I think it's that's just a testament. It doesn't rain here, so you get to play baseball all the time. Um, so a lot of guys get to just play year round, and I think that's what um, makes you know obviously Florida and Southern California um, such a hotbed for Major League Baseball. So which of these guys here did you play against in high school or travel ball growing up? Um, I don't. He went to El Toro, which is like 20 minutes from El Medina. So I, I would assume we crossed paths. But you, know, you play so much when you're younger that you don't really remember all the the guys you run across. But I'm sure we ran across at some point because we are all so close. Like, I guess Stanton on the American League, we grew up together and doing all that together. So I, I did a lot of showcases with him and perfect game events and all that kind of stuff. So. There's a lot of guys here from Southern California. Absolutely, and I'm working on a story about Sandy Alcantara. Obviously, he faced him a lot in Atlanta. Um, yeah. Just, uh, what do you make of what he's doing going 8 9 every time out? Yeah. Um, the, he's like a 1960s pitcher in 2022. Uh, to uh, How many innings does he have? Like 130 something innings already? It's, it's absurd. And. Um, I'm glad I don't have to face him all that like all that much anymore. But um, he's just, he, what he's doing is I think he, I think I saw a stat about Zach Wheeler and doing like eight innings like five or six times last year, and he's already got like eight or something like that, right? So um, it's special, and the, the Marlins got a good one. In an era when so many guys were going five or six, what is it about him from your vantage point as a hitter that allows him to go? Uh, fills up the strike zone. Um, he, he knows how, he's, it's like Clayton, it's like Jacob DeGrom. Every pitch has intent, every pitch is around the zone. Um, and guys like are okay pitching to contact, but his contact, he's throwing 99 miles an hour. So it's easy to pitch to contact when you do that. So he's not afraid to be in zone because of his stuff. So that's what makes him so good is he's a pitcher that, a right-handed arm that doesn't come around that very often that looks like Sandy. And um, so I think that's why he's able to attack hitters every pitch because his stuff is so good. I mean, how do you go against Pete? I mean, he knows how to get through it because I think there's so many swings. There's so many. I did it in 2018 and I was exhausted. I only did one round. So I think he knows how to navigate. But um, if you ask my son, who's in the clubhouse, he would say Ronald. <laughs> hey, Freddie, how is your family liking LA? Uh, uh, they love it. Um, we're still going back and forth because we haven't found a house uh, to buy yet in LA. We're still kind of looking around. So we're renting right now, but uh, we like it. Obviously, we grew up 40 minutes from here, so um, we love LA. We love the weather. Have you <laughs> the beach yet, though? 
Uh, well, my house in Orange County is on the water, so that kind of helps. <laughs> yeah. How many tickets did you have to uh, get for the fam tomorrow? Um, I, well, you get six. I had to ask for a couple more. Um, so there's a lot of people that want tickets, but we only get, I think we only get six. So I had to ask for, coming. Uh, dad's coming, my grandfather's coming. Um, and then obviously I got a lot of kids now, so they need tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Freddie, I'm sure you've already been asked, but just from Clayton's performance over the weekend to getting the honor, um, well, I, what, yeah. what did you kind of express to him, I guess, just as a teammate? And yeah, I gave him a hug. I actually got the, I was the one that got the call from Brian Snicker and because uh, he was trying to get a hold of Dave but Dave was doing pitching before the game uh, matchups and all that so I got a call from Snit on Saturday and I was like why is Snit calling me an hour before the game answered and he was like hey is Clayton there and I figured what was happening so I went and gave it to Clayton um, like I was talking earlier I got to be part of Mariano and Derek Jeter's last all-star games not that this is Clayton's last one but this is a moment in history, in baseball history, that we're going to be talking about a long time that Clayton Kershaw got to start in front of his home stadium. And it means so much, for I think, for Dodgers, Dodger fan base to see him on the mound at Dodger Stadium in the bottom of the first. Um, and it's going to be special. Like I said, 2013 was the loudest I've ever heard Dodger Stadium when Juan Uribe hit that two-run home run. Tomorrow, I think, is going to top it. Freddie, yeah. you have obviously a handful of former teammates here. Yeah. Too. You saw Freed, yep. and Riley all come up and you've seen them blossom as a yeah. Could I ask you about all three of those guys? Yeah. Uh, what Austin did when he first came up, how hot he was at the beginning, and then he went through what he went through, and to come back and turn around and be, in my opinion, he's going to be a perennial all-star now. Um, the way he carries himself, the way he plays every single day, how he controls the strike zone now. Um, I mean, he's hitting like what? What is he hitting like 290 with like almost 30 home runs? It, it's <laughs> and what to, to back it up? That's the hardest thing to do. It is be consistent and do it year in and year out. And now he's he's putting together his second straight amazing season. Um, I'm just so happy for him because I, you know Austin. He's just a wonderful person. Uh, Max, man, um, special. I've been telling saying what a special left arm that is six years ago so um, he's really coming to his own uh, one of the best pitchers in the game now um, and for him to be able to be back home uh, and for his family to see him in an all-star game at Dodger Stadium is gonna be special and, and Dansby man Dansby Dansby is uh, man what a, I, I love Dansby so much and uh, I, I don't think he's here today because he, I think he's with Mal Mal's at the US doing USA stuff so I, I'll see him tomorrow. I heard he's coming in tomorrow, but what the way he has set the franchise record for shortstop home runs last year and followed it up this year with what he's doing. Um, he's a winner. He's always been a winner. Winners find themselves that he put themselves in the right situations and the way he carries himself day in and day out. Everything that he's getting and receiving the last couple of years is well deserved. You had a handful of these now, but to have Dave Roberts and Snit here, yeah. is that pretty cool? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I talked to Dave. Dave called me yesterday uh, to congratulate me, and he goes, me, you, and Snit are going to sit down and just talk and hang out. Um, <laughs> and I said, I, I would like that very much. Uh, to see Snit again, when I talked to him a couple of days, uh, I talked to him yesterday after I made it, and he goes, to manage you again is, is you know, life, life works in wonderful ways sometimes. And to be in the same dugout with Snit again, uh, it's going to be cool. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. The legacy of David Ortiz. Um, a smile that makes you smile. Um, I th the joy he has for the game of baseball, and obviously, the player he was. Um, he's the whole package. He's what you want to try and be, and. Um, First ballot Hall of Famer for a reason. Uh, special player, special person. Do you have a favorite memory of David? Um, I mean, I think everyone has that memory of when he hits the walk-off home run and the flips over and the cop is like that in the bullpen. So I think that's my favorite David Ortiz memory. A lot of the guys in the Dominican wanted to say thank you because uh, you're so comfortable showing emotion. Yeah. And they're very proud of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Did, thank so you. you. I can't control that. So <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm a Freeman. We I like to cry. To <laughs> <laughs> I do feel it. Thank you, Shohei. Yeah, uh, playing against Shohei? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't feel very comfortable when I'm at first base when he's hitting. Um, 
but I haven't got to face him. I wanted to face him, you know, pitching. I've got to watch it a lot on TV. It doesn't look fun to face, but I want to face it. Um, I got left on deck in the All-Star game last year, but um, he's, a, he's a player that we're going to be talking about for a long time. It's, it's pretty much Babe Ruth in this generation. So long after we're gone, uh, the people are going to be talking about Shohei Itani like to talk about Babe Ruth. There's some rumors that he might come to your team. Well, How do you feel about that? <laughs> I think everybody would want Shohei Otani on their team. <laughs> uh, it's, we actually are like three feet away from each other in the in the clubhouse, which is pretty cool. Um, I've obviously got to play against Albert for 12, my whole career. Um, probably the best right-handed hitter of our generation. Um, first ballot Hall of Famer. And to be able to share a clubhouse and a dugout with someone like that is it, special. I've got to play with some Hall of Famers and Chipper. Obviously, I get to play with Clayton, who's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. But to be able to share clubhouses with guys that are as good and great and as great as people as Albert, um, that's what makes these events so fun for us, the players. Um, because these are guys we don't get to share clubhouses with if, unless you end up on the same team together. So to be able to do it for a couple of days, that's what makes this so fun for us. You haven't got anything autographed by him or you plan to? I have not gotten anything autographed. Um, I, I haven't got anything autographed in a long time, but I, we'll probably put out our balls. I'll get a jersey, like everyone sign it, but I, I should probably, thank you for my, I should probably get something just signed by him. <laughs> huh? Oh, team photo? Yeah. When you were describing that, it almost reminds me back in the day when, you know, as a child, you collect cards and then you put it together and you say, like, oh, this is like, you know, this will be the dream team. Is it almost like that, where, like, this collection of people are almost like your version of a, a dream team? Yeah, baseball? I mean, this or is like an ultimate team. Yeah, this is the best players in the game right now. So to be able to be a part of it, uh, that's pretty special for all of us. We're all fans of each other uh, until we have to face each other. Then we're not really happy to face each other but when you get to share the clubhouse you get to see how guys are and how they go about their business that's what makes this event so fun and obviously the talent speaks for itself and for an event to be able to come together where we're all together and get to showcase it that's what makes it so fun so how do you yeah. feel yeah. Freddie, i think i have to go take a team one, photo how do you feel calling the to the game well all-star game how do you feel i feel great um these are the moments that you don't really think is going to happen, but when they happen, uh, that makes it so fun. And my son is more excited, I think, than all of us combined. So this is what makes it so fun.